Hi all, everything in my video is pulled from the public domain and I am using them under the Fair Use Fair Dealings Guidelines. Everything I say is my own opinion. You should look into this information for yourselves, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Good morning, everybody. Yes, I've decided to use this just iconic picture of Catherine. I mean, you just could not have asked for a more gorgeous photo. Anyway, we have a lot to cover again today. The working royals are out and about. They're all around the world. We have Sophie, we have Anne, we have Charles, we have Catherine, and of course, we have Harry and Meghan being hmm, Harry and Meghan. So let's just jump in with both feet and get there, shall we? Let's go. All right, we're starting off with this place. I can't pronounce that, I'm sorry. But apparently, she was asked to stop in and they have said that Sophie had firsthand knowledge from those who had been homeless and challenges with their mental well-being and they know how empathetic and compassionate she is and they want her to be a volunteer, or maybe patron. Hmm. All right, moving on. And while we're at it talking about Sophie, I think it would be nice if she and Edward had their own Instagram so they could put up their own information. What do you guys think about that? Maybe we should do some sort of a mass petition and send it to the royal family. All right, moving on. Now, while Sophie is in the Netherlands, she had a meeting with leading Dutch women in business because she wanted to hear more about their female leaders while they're in the Netherlands. They discussed gender equality, leading by example, and how women should always support other women. I love that. They also had a discussion on conflict-related sexual violence and the importance of survivor voices. Go Sophie, we know that this has been one of her passions. I love seeing it come to fruition. All right, moving on. The Princess Royal, Princess Anne, went to Southampton today. First, she stopped to plant a rowan tree outside of the Princess Anne Hospital, and her visit made 42 years since the hospital was first opened. Very nicely done. I love that blue jacket too. When she was done there, she then headed to the Civic Center to hear about Southampton being awarded the Lord Mayor status, and she's meeting with political and business leaders and the Civic Chiefs today. There was a ceremony where Letters Patent was given over, conferring the Lord Mayor status on Southampton, and this was approved by Queen Elizabeth before her passing away. You know, I, I, she was born to do this kind of work, <laughs> telling you. So after she presented the letters patent, uh, conferring the status to Councillor Jack Heel Raymond, the Lord Mayor, I hope I said that right, then of course she unveiled an absolutely gorgeous plaque. Keep on keeping on, Anne. I just love this, I really do. All right, moving on now. Moving on to the Princess of Wales, Catherine met up with Roman Kemp. Uh, now, he apparently is a famous uh, radio personality of some sort, and he met with her and they did a short film and they discussed the importance of mental well-being, relationship, and nurturing children. Now, he apparently has had some mental health struggles after the death of a very close friend's Capital FM producer, Joe Lyons. He talked very candidly that at one point he had severe depression and had considered removing himself from this life. And um, last year he praised his therapist for helping him work through all of his struggles. And he's been on antidepressants starting when he was 15. He tried different kinds of therapy. Um, but the two of them walked around and talked in more depth the importance of a child's social and emotional world and the significance of relationships and surroundings and experiences. Because let's face it, if you grow up in a world where you're not loved, you're not cherished, you're never told how important you are, you're never made to feel worthy, there's a big hole that's left in inside of you that never gets filled. Trust me. Now there's multiple other big name people involved in this. You'll hear more about them as the um, initiative progresses. All right, moving on. 
All right, so now the queen consort, we know how much she loves reading, and she visited a charity called Book Aid International, and she went to the charity's warehouse, and this is where the books are sent to communities around the world. They also had a 50th anniversary celebration. So while she was there, she um, toured the warehouse, she met staff and donors and trustees and volunteers, and even helped pack a few books. She has been the patron of this charity since 2013. Now the aim of this charity is to foster a love of reading in children. Yeah. Now it was the 50th anniversary, so she cut the celebratory cake. Then of course she addressed the audience, which included a group of primary school children. And she said, I'm the very proud patron. Um, yeah, why shouldn't she be? The queen, after the cake cutting and she made her speech, took part in a poetry reading by poet Joshua Siegel. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Just a little background information. This charity has helped more than 250,000 children develop their reading abilities. And it was established under a royal charter signed by King George II in 1739. Now, of course, also while Camilla was there, there was a student who decided to sit next to her mother and read to Camilla, which I thought was very nice. I, I love this kind of stuff. She really does well with this kind of stuff and it's her passion. That's what makes it so good. All right, moving on. All right, moving on, King Charles, it's being said, will not feature on Australia's new $5 banknote. That was announced by the Central Bank uh, of Australia. They said they're going to use an indigenous design to honor the culture and history of the first Australians and that it will consult first Australians when they're doing the note. And that image is going to take the place of Queen Elizabeth, who has been on every Australian banknote since 1953. Now, they're going to still put Charles apparently on the coins, just not on the banknotes. Now, you should know that monarchists in Australia are not happy, and they're saying that the bank had no right to make that decision you know, arbitrarily all on their own, that this should have been, you know, put out to the people to make a decision. Now, at the same time, people are telling King Charles that he should go to Australia to offset the growing Republican movement. Now, interestingly enough, which I find, I was just like, are you kidding? Apparently, this entire thing they're saying has to do with Harry and Meghan and their attacks on the monarchy and the fact that Charles has not fought back and they're saying that a high profile royal tour could be just what Australia needs to remind them why they're part of the Commonwealth. Personally, I believe most Australians don't want to become a republic. I think that they're happy with being in the Commonwealth, which by the way is a voluntary thing. All right, moving on. All right, moving on to Harry and Meghan. These are some of the stories that have come out that they're saying that Harry allegedly carried out loyalty tests on his exhausted aides while he was still working as a royal. If he had a problem with something that somebody said in the media, he would want them to pursue it. And if they said, don't do it, it's not worth the fight. And if you don't pursue it, then he would question your loyalty. I, I can believe that. All right, this next story that came out, I just was like, what? They're saying that Archie won't attend the King's coronation with Harry and Meghan, and they've got five key reasons why. The reasons, you know, it's their age, and they're going to stay behind the scenes. Here's the thing. It's not even confirmed that Harry and Meghan are going to attend the coronation. So I don't know why people put out articles like this. If, and I stress if, Harry and Meghan went to that coronation. No, the small children wouldn't be there. But that's only to prove if Harry is a hypocrite because he's already said that he is not going to go unless he gets a personal apology and Meghan gets a personal apology. Let me tell you something. 
That's not going to happen. And you don't make peace by getting personal apologies. You make peace because both sides want to bury the hatchet. And that's not what this is about with Harry. For Harry, it's about power. So I don't believe he's going. And I'm still not sure why the family would want to apologize and quote unquote settle things when Harry and Meghan are the ones who've been selling their family family members out to make money. Absolutely. They released private conversations like that one where Charles said to Harry and William, please don't make my final years a misery, said while he was, you know, upset over the death of his mother. You know, people have like had it with these two and their constant, I love this title, their whinge That really is all it is. People are, people have real problems. Heat, food, rent, COVID. Nobody wants to hear anymore about their troubles as they live in this huge mansion with servants and drivers and private jets everywhere. People are sick of the whining. It's like, get a grip on yourselves. Well, moving on, you know, he talked about Chelsea Davy, who was the love of his life. Let's be honest. She really was. And he, and let's not forget that she dumped him after Catherine and William's wedding because she said the pressure would have been too much for her. Now he's twisting the narrative. He's flipping the script to say, well, I didn't think the family would accept her. He says, oh, she never worried what other people thought, and, but she wore short skirts, high boots, danced with abandon, and drank as much tequila as I did. That's a quote right out of the book. Why would you say things like that? You know, if Chelsea Davy or Cressida Bona or any of them wrote a book about Harry and talked about his paranoia, he'd be screaming from the rooftops about his privacy. Ugh. Moving on, you know, we know that whenever Har oh, Catherine and William do anything, <clears throat> like on their tour of New York where um, Harry and Meghan then release the Invictus trailer and all this other stuff, they're like little kids trying to steal the attention. So here's Catherine launching her Shaping Us campaign, and she goes to the BAFTA, and she releases a clay motion film, and she's dressed to the nines, and she's looking good, and everybody is talking about Catherine and this new initiative. So I knew, I knew something was going to come out from Montecito, and I was right. Harry decides this is a good time to release a statement about the Well Child Awards. What? That's right. He decides to release a statement. And I have to agree with Observer 88 here. Harry has done nothing to promote child well-being except for claiming the achievements of others, which is true. And if he really cared about mental health, he would stop trying to destroy his family's mental health, which is exactly what he's doing. All right, moving on to our last story of the day, essentially. I remember I showed you guys the other day that Kim Kardashian and Jennifer Lopez and Tom Hanks' wife and like all these big stars got together for a, a party at Oprah's house. And the one person who was not invited, of course, was Meghan Markle. Heidi Klum was there. The Kardashian si other sister was there. And everybody was like, why would Oprah not invite them? So remember, articles came out saying that, no, their friendship was fine. They were just keeping it on the down low. And the statement came out saying this is a delicate moment for Harry and Meghan because the coronation is coming and appearing at such glitzy high profile events, you know, even if it's to honor Oprah, would rub King Charles the wrong way. So they need to keep a low profile right now. And does anybody really believe that? Remember, that's uh, supposedly, or we're wondering if that's one of the reasons why Meghan didn't go to the Spotify Women in Entertainment party. I'm beginning to think she wasn't invited. I'm beginning to think that she hasn't really been invited to a lot of these events. And that's why she's not going. She would never pass up the, the chance to dress up and hobnob with these people. Maybe she was ashamed to go or embarrassed because now the Spotify CEO admits that paying that amount of money to Meghan Markle was a mistake, essentially. Maybe she didn't want to be seen there. Remember now, she doesn't want to be seen hobnobbing at glitzy events because it would be in bad taste, right? Well, I guess that depends on which event that you go to. Apparently, 
Ellen, it was Ellen's birthday is what my understanding. And Portia surprised Ellen with a renewal of vows at this event. Jennifer Aniston and Courtney Cox were there. I'm sure they kept their distance knowing that anything that they said could be, you know, revealed. And sure enough, Harry and Meghan were there, although they were not next to each other. They were as far apart in the room as you can get. And supposedly everybody was just enjoying this authentic moment. Chris Chris Kardashian, if you can imagine that one, is the one who supposedly officiated at this party. I, I'm like, ugh, ugh, cringe. So to start off with, I don't know if Courtney Cox and Jennifer Aniston were really there. I don't see them in any of the photos, number one. Number two, don't think for one second that Courtney Cox is still not unhappy with Harry for releasing the fact that she had drugs in her house that Harry then took, which made her trash can turn into a monster with a big open mouth that was talking. I'm thinking that either they didn't know they were gonna be there, and if they were there, I'm pretty sure they stayed on opposite sides of the room. But could you imagine being at a party with these two, knowing that anything you say to them at any time, they could turn into some sort of a, you know, insult and they could announce to the whole world who would even want to have a conversation with them at a party like this you, you know what i'm saying you'd have to be so careful you'd have to keep your conversation topics to like the weather to make sure that nothing gets misconstrued it's the craziest thing so supposedly Let's not forget, Megan was invited to Oprah's party and they didn't go to anything because they're keeping all their friendships on the down low. And yet they attended Ellen's birthday party and the pictures were leaked. Okay, this smacks of desperation. Look, you guys, we're going to let everybody know that we're popular and people want to be around us. Yeah, I don't think so. All right, I feel like we need a palate cleanser, and I want you guys to know that uh, Finn gets ridiculously jealous if he sees me petting another animal or giving attention to the cat. I, all I was doing was petting the cat, okay? Watch this. Finn, I'm allowed to pet the other pets. He sees me petting Tigger. He's getting all upset. I Oh, that's killing you, isn't it? Just... Yeah, okay. All right, you guys, you know what I want. Hit that subscribe button. If you've already hit the button, double check and make sure that you're still subscribed. Don't forget to leave those comments below and make them good. Don't forget to go up into the description box where you'll find the links to my Twitter, my Getter, my Rumble, my email, and my Patreon. I checked my coffee fund this morning. The money I transferred in still has not arrived. They're saying it should arrive by the 7th. So that would be next week. So we'll just keep an eye on that, okay? As always, you guys, have a great day.